Alrighty, welcome back. Uh, we continue with number 12. So the question is asking which of the following is a quartic polynomial with the leading coefficient of six. So a quartic means degree four, and then leading coefficient means the term with the highest power has to have a coefficient of six on it. The first one hopefully is easy to, to ignore because the degree of this polynomial is actually five. Uh, if we take the negative 6x to the 6 and we add it to 6x to the 6, those two will cancel out. And the highest power will give us a 5, which is a pentic polynomial, not a quartic. Quartic means degree 4. So this one's out. Uh, I'm going to skip this one for a moment. Negative x to the 4 plus 6x to the 3rd minus 4. This is a quartic polynomial because the highest power is 4, but the leading coefficient is negative 1. There is a six here, but it's not the leading coefficient, so this one's out. This one's not even a polynomial. The x cannot be in the denominator. This one is a polynomial, but we need to multiply this out. So if we do, uh, we have 6x squared times x plus 3 plus 5x. So if we were to multiply this out, uh, 6x squared times x would give us 6x to the third. Uh, 6x squared times the 3 would give us 18x squared plus the 5x on the outside. So here we do see a leading coefficient of 6, but the degree of this polynomial is 3. We need a degree of 4. So that one doesn't work. Uh, here the degree is 2, so that one's out. Uh, well, we're going to come back to this answer choice. So 2x squared plus 2 times 3x squared minus 5. So if we were to multiply this out, we would get 2x squared times 3x squared minus 5. So we basically multiply this by this whole thing. And then we also need to multiply 2 by that whole thing. So plus 2 times 3x squared minus 5. Now we can multiply term by term. So 2 times 3 would give us 6. x squared times x squared would give us x to the fourth. Then 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And then we have x to the second power. 2 times 3 is 6. And then x squared comes along. And then 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Now we can combine these two terms, but we actually don't need to go that far. The highest power will still be 4, and the leading coefficient will still be 6. So that actually is the answer to that question. And then for this last one, what is the degree of this polynomial? Remember that anything raised to the 0th power except for 0 is 1. So these terms essentially might as well not be there. And then anything raised to the first power is itself. So when you have multiple variables, remember you have to add the powers of the variables. So 6 plus 9 would give us 15. 7 plus 9 would give us 16. So 16 is the higher of the two numbers. So that is the degree of that polynomial. For these questions, uh, you have to perform the indicated operation. So when we add, you would just have this polynomial plus this polynomial. So this one, maybe we can do it live. So the highest power here is x to the third. Here we have x to the third. So it's 3x to the third plus 6x to the third would be 9x to the third. Then we look at the squares. We have a 4x squared and then a minus 5x squared. So 4 minus the 5 would give us a negative 1. So this would be minus x squared. Then we look at the x terms. Negative 7x minus 5x would give us a negative 12x. And then finally, negative 2 plus 8 would give us a plus 6. And that's that. The next one I'm going to do on paper, so hopefully you remember from, we had a dis discussion a couple of times, once at the very beginning of the semester, and once when we were talking about subtraction of polynomials. Anytime we have subtracted something from something, or something less than something else, 
those are the two scenarios where you have to change the order in which things are written. So let me copy these things down. 3x to the third plus 4x squared. Oops. Minus 7x minus 2. And the other polynomial is 8 minus 5x, 6x cubed minus 5x squared. So the question is to subtract this from this. And whenever that's the case, the thing that's after the from has to go first. And the thing that is before the from has to go second. And we put a minus in the middle. The order matters because otherwise one answer is going to be correct. The other answer in the reverse direction would actually be wrong. So here, if we distribute the negative, we would get 8 minus 5x plus 6x cubed minus 5x squared. That stays the same. But when we distribute the negative here, 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 and here, all of those signs will change or will flip. So this will become minus 3x to the third minus 4x squared plus 7x plus 2. Now we can combine like terms, starting with the highest power and then going down. So we have a 6x cubed and we have a negative 3x cubed. That gives us 3x cubed. Then we look at our squares. We have a negative 5 and a negative 4. So that gives us negative 9x squared. Then we have a negative 5x and a positive 7x. So that gives us 2x. And then we have an 8 and a 2, so that gives us plus 10. So that would be the answer right here for this question. For multiplication, you would just FOIL term by term. I guess I'll do it. So here, we would again do uh, exactly what we did right here. It's the same exact type of question. Nothing really changes. The procedure remains the same. So we multiply 3x cubed by 8 minus 5x first. Plus, then we multiply 4x squared by the same quantity, 8 minus 5x. And now we distribute term by term. So this would give us 8 times 3 is 24x cubed. Then 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, x to the 4th. x cubed times x would give us x to the 4th. Then 4 times 8 is 32, x squared. And then finally, 4 times negative 5 is negative 20, x squared times x would give us x to the 3rd. We do need to write this in standard form, so highest power goes first. Uh, there are no other x to the 4, so negative 15x to the 4th. Then we have 24x cubes and minus 20x cubes. So that gives us 4x cubes. And then finally, just the 32x squared. That would be the answer for uh, this question. For the next two... I guess I'll just go directly here. Anytime you're multiplying polynomials out, you can only do two at a time. You can never do all three simultaneously. So ideally, you want to think about, hey, this guy's not even here. It's there. We can't just get rid of it. But imagine that it weren't there, and you were just multiplying these two things. Now, hopefully, you also recognize that, well, that's just the square of some formula. a plus b times a plus b is just a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And then this guy just comes along for the right, a plus b. So we multiply these two things first. That gives us this as the answer. And then we have to multiply this answer by a plus b. And this is just straight multiplication again. So multiply a squared by a plus b. 
then multiply 2ab by a plus b, then multiply b squared by a plus b, which would give us a cubed, a squared times a is a cubed, plus a squared times b is just a squared b, plus, now we have 2ab times a, so that would give us 2a squared b, because when bases are same and we're multiplying, we add the exponents. So a to the 1 times a to the 1 would give us a to the 2, or a squared, plus 2ab times b would give us 2ab squared, plus b squared times a would be b squared a, but we can also write that, so b squared a is the same as ab squared. You're just rearranging the terms. So I'm just going to write this as ab squared plus b squared times b would be b cubed. So this would give us a cubed. Now I have an a squared b and I have another two a squareds b. So that gives me a total of three a squares b. Then I have two a b squared and two a b, and I'm sorry, two a b squared plus a b squared. So that's 3ab squares plus the b cubed. And that's my answer. For the other one, or the next one, we had a plus b times a minus b, and then an a plus b again at the end. So hopefully again, you're recognizing that this is really just the difference of squares. This is just a squared minus b squared. So if that's what it is, we can replace it with a squared minus b squared times a plus b. Well, this is just the foiling problem now. So just as we've done before, we multiply a squared by a plus b, and we multiply b squared by a plus b. a squared times a is a cubed. a squared times b is a squared b minus b squared times a, it would just be a b squared, and then b squared times b would be b cubed. And in this case, there's no like terms, so we can't combine anything like we did in the previous problem. There's nothing to combine here. Um, a common mistake here is students thinking that these two guys are like terms, and hopefully a, re a refresher would help here. Like terms have to have the same base and the same powers. So a in this term has a second power, a in this term only has a power of one. So right off the bat, it doesn't even matter what b's are doing. If the a's don't match in powers, they're not like terms. There's nothing we can do with this. The question's done, it's over. So this one was a bit easier and shorter than the previous one. Uh, moving on. This is a difference of squares because we have a 3x, a 3x, a 4y, a 4y. One of them's a plus, one of them's a minus. So this one I'm actually going to do directly in my head. The formula is a squared minus b squared. So if I square the first term, I'm going to get 9x squared. And in case you're wondering how I got there, 3x times 3x. 3x times 3x is 9x squared minus and then you square the 4y. So 4y times 4y would give us 16y to the second power. The next question down is a square of sum, a, a, b, b. These terms are the same, 3x, 3x, 4y, 4y, and they're both pluses. So we can invoke the a plus b, the quantity squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared here. So the recipe says to square the first term. Well, I just squared it in the previous problem, so I'm going to leverage that, 9x squared. Plus, now I multiply the two terms, so 3x times 4y would give me 12xy, times the double, or times two, would give me 24xy, plus square the last term. So 4y the quantity squared, or 4y times 4y would just be 16y squared. I'm going to copy this, hopefully you'll see why. 
because the very next question is the square of a difference. And it's the same exact terms. It's 3x instead of a plus, there's a minus here. So the answer has to be the same exact one as the one above, but with a minus in the middle. And there's that. So you, the, the idea, again, of having people memorize the formulas is that when these questions appear in pairs, you're only solving one of them, and the second one you're getting for free. You don't have to solve it again, as long as you recognize, oh, it's the same algebraic terms, one with a plus, one with a minus. I'll continue the other problems in the next video.